This is, I was experimenting with uh, the background and um, uh, and I think we are starting for the beyond music. So okay, again here you have the discovery part, uh, then you have the workplace part, normal, you know, the, the normal uh, business user workplace. Then you have the the uh, I can't, the records and then the administration part of it. But again, it's the infrastructure really that is important, right? In the three layer conformance to what we have seen so far. And then you have the interfaces on the outside, mostly HTTP, but not only. So um, SCP was one thing, FTP, SFTP was another, MTA or secure mail and, and secure LDAP or so. Those are the typical protocols. And usually you put that control point in here in order to, you know, uh, the flux of data coming in with whatever protocol you know, needs to be secured. So think about this. This is really an abstract way also of seeing, you know, what is the, the gist of an um, IOG lifecycle government uh, solution, you know, deploy on an infrastructure. And we did this three years on AIX. And so we are doing this all. Actually, we did this now on uh, SoftLayer using Red Hat Linux. Uh, Tim did this, you know, for a demo for uh, Las Vegas uh, two years ago on iPass using the IBM Workload Manager modeling, you know, uh, workloads. Um, and uh, so we are experimenting, but we are not yet there where we want to be. And so where do we want to be? So let's talk about it. Uh, just a recap to what we have heard uh, today, right? So from, an, um, so from a business perspective point of view, I want to go to a marketplace and say I'm searching for a solution, a service, a solution which can be deployed as a well, manager, a deployed and manager as a service, right? So I go online, search a marketplace, download it, put it into my service catalog, and then my consumer internally or externally can use it, right? Deploy the service and get there. On the other side, you know, there are people creating the service, defining what's necessary, bring them in, and then you have the, you know, the provisioning, all that stuff that we discussed uh, this morning, right? So pretty simple. I'm, I'm learning from you, even though I really uh, was just stealing the voice from the others, though. But I'm hoping you're okay with it. So I, you know, this is really the concept I would like to use, right? And I didn't dig into, so I'm glad uh, I heard all of this today because this gives a lot of insight to me. And I'm hoping we can work a little bit more closer together. And as you can see, I've put here you know, a little bit of my own thoughts. So we need policies to this. So we have the. So again, let me start uh, uh, from scratch. I have a solution, and I translate the solution to a workload. I call it a workload pattern because, from an ECM perspective, that's you know how the you know the combined operation of the user population using an ECM system would push load onto a system and in order to sustain this I need a topology of resources that will do that. And I do this from T1, you know, when I deploy the service in a way that says I'm estimating what the load will be and based on this my topology is X. Right? And so then I define, sorry, <coughs> Uh, I define the topology, the relationship, you know, the node types and everything. Here I would like to create my own uh, domain uh, specific language. I would like to say an ECM repository instead of database, because ECM repository is something different than a database, even though the database is there, right? So I'm creating a, a domain language that is powerful and understandable by the people I'm talking to, the customer I'm talking to, right? So I have then the definition, the node types and the relationship. And I think the relationship is really important. And I'll show you why, in my opinion. Then I have the plans, uh, which says, you know, initial deployment and then de uh, undeployment. So, like, the elasticity is coming because I'm, you know, expanding, you know, exploding and imploding the topology, basically, right? And that is what I call elasticity. And then I have policy rules that says, you know, where can I put my stuff, right? So, the placement and, you know, like, uh, um, yeah, I'll show you an example of this. So again, then I want to be, uh, you know, the standardized. That's uh, you know very important to these business customers. So I'm going there and say, so, okay, I need to have portability, especially if, if I have a complex application or so. So I need, you know, something that allows me to specify this. And Tosca would be a very nice example to do so. And then I'll create on top of Tosca, you know, something that is specific to my domain to allow me, as the expert, to provide this expertise, you know, to anyone else that doesn't have to be. Did I uh, cite you? Okay, great. Uh, so so you know, so you know, the the networking areas. Yes, 
a lot of resources from software because we want to provide the service. So software is giving uh, given us only the infrastructure as the service part, right? And so we have this, this bubble here, right? So now we have to manage this bubble here and this is only a single tenant. So the area in between those is waste or so because the, the stuff is sitting around not doing anything or you know, it's just wasted, I'm paying for it. And we are paying around 25,000 euros a month for uh, eight tenants or so, right? And then depending on what you're going there, you, you do this or that. <clears throat> so we are providing a SaaS service on top of an infrastructure and platform service, you know, inside IBM, you know, a service provider, a service provider, basically. And this will be the normal thing to do. And again, we would like to implement this, and so there is a, um, a student working on this right now to create, a, uh, you know, uh, the dynamicity, you know, exploiting the elasticity to get, you know, to the efficiency that we want to have in order, you know, to minimize cost and maximize uh, efficiency of the system. So this would be that, you know, if you have a lot of tenants, right? <laughs> because uh, now, you know, like this is exploding, right? Uh, and this might become an MP complex problem if you have to have resources, every resource is a number of uh, KPIs or so, key values uh, in the performance indicator. So you have a lot of messaging going on or so, and so there are aspects that are not easy to take. Yeah, for simple things like, you know, yes, WordPress or so might be very easy to do, but if you are going to have a, a real application, that's uh, different. So real world example. Uh, this is really uh, got from a bank or so. Uh, the guys are saying, okay, we want records in discovery content management. Uh, so this means a catalog, full text, and persistent store for the data. Performance should be you know, a small system, 300 concurrent users, 25,000 uh, documents per day. Medium, 3,000 concurrent users, 250. And large is 10,500. So then you have business continuity aspect, which means they want to have backup and restore. Uh, three months incremental is the time window that you are using for this. And then high books. High availability, 99.9%. Uh, so do this on a, on a, on a cloud, uh, any provider, so how difficult this is to get them to, to give you some numbers or so. And then disaster recovery here, um, recovery, point of, uh, uh, <coughs> or recovery point objective is zero data loss, and then recovery time objective is one day, for example, right? So now with this you can, you can model your application, okay? Try to model this application with you know, a database, a full text index, and so on. And then use, I don't know, let, let's say 500 terabytes of data or so on, and then see how much this costs. Okay, uh, we have seen this, so let's skip this. <clears throat> then I do my computation, I get a list of this. So you, you, you see here the number of uh, cores, uh, this is the memory, the number of images, the number of cores, the number, uh, and the memory that you need for this. Then you need it for a development system, FD, um, you know, function test system, and then uh, system under test system, and small, medium, and production. So this is you know, kind of the list of things we are doing in order to say this is what I need to stand up for a single customer, right? Because this is how they operate in, in production. And now you go and then you start uh, you know, defining your topology. So this is a simple topology without high availability. Again, eventually you have to introduce a demilitarized zone, right? So you have the load balancer coming in, uh, you push it onto, you have an HTTP server here, then you have the application layer here. Uh, I've included a small database here because the application in some states or so. And then you have the actual you know, system with the logic for an enterprise content management system and then the storage over here. And then you know, just model this and then try to ask you know, your uh, hardware, uh, the infrastructure provider, uh, can I have a VLAN, can I have a demilitarized zone, can I have you know, firewalls and all that, and then try to add up. So it's really interesting how to get there. Things like this, for example, TDS is the TV that I consider it's an LDAP server. So how do you integrate the LDAP system with you know, the system of your uh, customer, right? Because usually they have a corporate LDAP system and the, uh, the single uh, management of the LDAP is really with the customer, not in the cloud. And so now you have to sort of, you know, having all these guys going out to the customer, they have to open up their firewall to do the backhaul to see, you know, is this guy there, is it in, uh, you know, in the group? Is this you know, authentication, is the password correct, and all that stuff, right? So it's not easy to be done, it can be done, but it's work. And then you start and you say, okay, now I want it to, uh, with a high, high available you know, version of this. So you are doubling the whole thing again, and now you have to manage it, right? And then given, <coughs> given the time, yeah, I'm... You're one minute left. <laughs> one minute left. 
let me just give, okay, I, I'm trying to give you, you know, the sense of how complex this will be, and this is really not a complex system, it's a complex solution, right? So again, what we have seen today, it, it works in principle from a functional perspective or so, but it becomes different if you have to go into the, in the context of an enterprise where the enterprise is relying on you, like you have 10,000 10, users are working on the system, you cannot afford the system goes down, right? 10,000 hours is a lot of money for, uh, for a certain company. And so therefore the, uh, you know, the constraints on how to operate this is really completely different, right? And uh, yeah, let me stop here. Uh, yeah, well, I, I really just wanted to continue on and on because this is how you, you split, you go through. So let me just jump to this one here. This was a very interesting uh, discussion with the customer that we had. So we go into, and then we ask our guys, you know, like, okay, now you have, you know, in a data center, uh, let's say this is an IPS system, IBM, but can be any system. So VMware back, right? And so now I want to have the ability to say that I have two applications, you know, like the ICN application here, for example, or, uh, you know, my backend server, and they cannot run, they run all virtualized, you know, in the virtual machine, but they cannot run onto the same box, because if the box goes down, my high availability is done, right? So I have to have the possibility to say, run it onto different physical servers. And so in iPass, it was almost impossible, you know, you, you have to do a lot of things, you know, to get there, so they're working on this. And so this would be something interesting to say, I really don't want to know all this, right? I want to have a policy that says high available and that's it, right? And then we'll figure out what to do in order to get there, right? And we did this, you know, like uh, for the application, we did this uh, for the storage as well. Uh, so for example, here the customer came in and said, hey, by the way, uh, we want high availability and disaster recovery. Now this means you're having, you know, uh, four systems basically double in one and double in the other, but this is a waste, right? So they said, uh, in this case, we have synchronous replication between two data centers at 25 kilometers apart, so why don't we use it, you know, for both? So you are mangling high availability and disaster recovery. And in this case, you can, you know, really save a lot of money if you do that, but, you know, you have to have the underlying infrastructure supporting this, right? So we were asking, and then the, the, the hardware was um, sort of there, but not quite. So for example, the full text index, how do we replicate the full text index? Because every time they reorder, everything, all the blocks are, you know, recomputed. And so the hardware device would, you know, <laughs> replicate the whole thing. And this could be, you know, several terabytes of data that every time, you know, the index is being rebuilt, is shipped over. So we said, don't worry, we will do it in, in software. And so now we have a software solution for that, right? Okay, but uh, yeah, now let me stop here then. The summary is fine. So yeah, the summary. This is you know a real world application. Yes, I, I believe everything you said this morning, and I'm a, a supporter of that. I really would like to to get to that point. But again, taking a uh, classical application, bringing it to the cloud, is a lot of work. It took us three years, a team of you know like five to six people or so working on this to really make a traditional you know enterprise content management application running as you know a cloud service. Uh, and here there are holes we found and in, we are trying to solve these holes also just with, with you, know, you guys in research. Okay, I think this is all I wanted to say. We have time for a couple of questions. Two, three, four questions with the other one. Once. Otherwise, I'm before a festival where I recommend that SAP is modeling all of the application based in Tosca and we won't claim that this is simple enough. But they invented their own methodology how to modularize it. But they, how do they call it? They, they layer their overall application and they are, they are modeling part of the overall topology. Tosca has the ability to import already modeled parts and so on. So they really structure and go ahead with this kind of stuff like that. So they, they, they are able to do it. Yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about in Google, right? So this these are pieces, software. and this is what we are trying to do. So that says, you know, like this is an HTTP server, and if you want, this can be high available also. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a team. And then you bring it in, and then, yes. so that's part of it. And we are with Tim, for example, of yes. course, we are also this and creating a library of small networks. Yeah, that's well, that might very well be the case that for some specific uses, such as you might have one kind of model or pattern, yes. and for others you have different ones. So uh, maybe uh, there is there are only a few customers with a lot of data, 
or there may be uh, thousands of customers with only a few data and that may trigger a different, let's say, backend for the, for the content store. Yeah. This is the, in, in, in Tosca, there is something that's called boundary definition. Yeah. You can basically you have a node type and the node type can be implemented by completely different topologies. And one node up above can have a requirement on 99% uh, availability, the other on five lines, and the other should be scalable and, run, and, and recoverable. And then when you throw in one topology template, then the engine does the resolution based on the requirement and sucks in completely different topologies. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what can be done based on the language, and there is CA claims that they are doing it, but they test it. But uh, this only works if it is within one node type, right? But if it is... No, yeah. in Tosca you can have dangling requirements. You model stuff and then you basically say, I stop here and here I need a, a five petabyte database. I don't care whether this is no SQL or SQL and so on. So we need, we may, we may discuss it all yeah, 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 yeah. Again, guys, you know, if someone has interest, I would like to see this working in a real production environment. So, if you only pay peanuts, you will get numbers. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we need to do some research in the lab or so, and then yes. once we are confident that this works, we move it out to the customer. But see, these guys need to get their master thesis that they are starting in autumn, end of the year. Yeah. So maybe some people, two or three people, have interest in work for Catalgo and Bernhardt uh, and do the work for more than a year. Uh, yeah. For master. For, ma for master. master. <laughs> this is that's good. So, German. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you very much. So oh, before we go, yeah, well, I'll stop. before before I close, uh, those of you who uh, need to present. To